Brian Fuhrer. I founded the Volcano Writers Group several years ago, and it's a teeny group up in Volcano on Big Island of Hawaii, and we all enjoy writing stories. And here with me today is the owner of the beautiful Volcano Garden Arts, Mr. Ira Ono. Uh, now, I, the question was raised, how did we, the writers group, find you? Uh, well, uh, when I started Volcano Garden Arts 18 years ago, uh, one of my missions was to have it available for the community. And since that time, uh, it's been available for the community uh, on any form. We've had uh, bonsai classes here, we've had poetry readings, we've had uh, t classes, Tai Chi classes, things like that. So uh, it was kind of a natural when you uh, were bringing in your published books, because we do have a collection of uh, local authors, and it kind of started with that. Yeah, yeah, it did. What, what do you want me to ask? What do you want to share? How about yourself? That's a personal question. <laughs> <laughs> Not, I'm just goofy. Stephen Colbert uh, has Okay, uh, I, I, uh, I'm originally a New Yorker that came to Hawaii on a vacation in 1968. Wow. And I had a wonderful New York artist in Dancer's Life. And once I got here, I said, this is exotic, I am staying. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you came here because if it wasn't for you, you wouldn't have a place to stay and me. So I uh, thank you again. For You're welcome. Dinner. All right. Hello, everybody. I am Pam O'Shaughnessy with the Volcano Writers Group. My next poem is Mood Diabolique. You know that moment in monster movies between chase scenes when the innocent villagers have a party with a bonfire and dancing? The party's on right now across the alfalfa field where the lights are. I'm sitting on fresh hay in a dim barn. I can see out the second story window for miles. The tall doors are securely locked. But the devil got in first. It's just the devil and me. And all night long, he regales me with his complaints. And I have to listen, he's the devil. Okay, I hi Johnson. It's nice to be here with the Hawaii Writers Guild. I wrote an, another, submitted another thing about called the Echo of the Hawaiian Mele, calling her children. The formal educational history in Hawaii represents the questionable dialectic of education versus indoctrination, or what some may choose to call domination. When the first visitors from other lands arrived on the Hawaiian Islands, they met a culture that had their own language, their own song, their own dance, their own system of education and medicine. There was a profound ethic, ethic of responsibility to the land. The cultural ethic was known as manama aina, cherishing or respecting the land. Within this ethic, the land was looked upon as mother and sister, elder sibling. The ideology embodied the frame of reference for the substratum of a political monarchy. The Hawaiians have an oral history of visitation for at least 2,000 years, but the most significant change occurred with the arrival of foreign explorers from Europe and North America in 1778, namely with the arrival of Captain James Cook. Hi, I'm Janet, damn it. Uh, my name is Janet Carpenter. I'm part of the Volcano Writers Group and the Hawaii Writers Guild. And um, I'm going to be reading today from our first published anthology, Out of Our Minds, Voices from the Mist. We're still out of our minds and we have a volume two coming out. It's called The Pond. Come on, Lonnie, it'll be fun! Nathan shouted as he got out of the pickup truck, slamming the door and running toward the pond, taking off his shirt and throwing it down as he went. Lonnie sat in the passenger side, arms crossed, 
refusing to budge. She had heard all the stories of the strange pond and was sorry she even mentioned it to Nathan, because now he was determined to prove her wrong. The pond on the coast of Ka'ul had been there a long time, the result of fresh water bubbling up from the aquifer and mixing with salt water from the nearby coast. The black lava rock that comprised the walls of the pond gave it a dark and foreboding look even during the day. Lonnie would not go in the pond. It was haunted, plain and simple, with something old and evil. And she absolutely would not set foot in it. Come on, he shouted again. Don't be like that. At least come out and sit by the pond and watch me die, he teased, laughing. The thing below in the dark waters felt the truck door slamming, the humans yelling, the rhythmic thump of footsteps, and it stirred. With a deep breath and a, I should know better than this, voice in her head, Lonnie opened the door and stepped out. The still water of the pond glimmered in the moonlight, inviting anyone to step in for a midnight party. But Lonnie knew better. She walked toward Nathan, her eyes never leaving the reflected moon on the water's surface. There were many tales of the Ninole area in Ka'u, some of night marchers and strange whispering winds from the mountains. But the one Lonnie believed was the spirit that haunted the pond. This was the first time in many years she was even close enough to see the pond. Nathan was holding out his hand to her, beckoning her to join him, just as the still waters were doing to him. Lonnie looked into his eyes, crossed her arms again, and shook her head, no. Oh, forget it then, Nathan exclaimed as he kicked off his rubber slippers, turned and ran, jumping into the silvery pool. Deep inside the crevice below, the thing analyzed the changes happening. The ripples in the water were big, but not from a leaf blowing in or children throwing pebbles. She opened her crusty yellow eyes and turned her head toward the vibrations. There, an electric current in the water from flesh and blood. Something warm and alive was in the pond. Pray. The hunger now was more intense than ever. She had been a long, it had been a long time since her last meal, excuse me. <clears throat> she unfurled her snake-like body from the treasure pile of human bones, trophies from another time, and slowly peeked out to investigate. Woo-hoo, yelled Dathan, splashing water. See, Lonnie, try look, I'm still here. Come on, join me, it feels great, come on. Lonnie stepped closer to the pond. Nathan, you know you shouldn't be in there. Just come out, please. You proved your point. There's nothing wrong with the pond. You the man, okay? So let's just go now. Nah, not until you come in. You the one stay thinking the pond's haunted. You have to come in before I get out. Come on, see, there's nothing wrong with the pond. The thing below slithered forward slightly her sensitive nose picking up the pulse of the human in the water, the throbbing of the heartbeat matching her own hunger. An evil smile began creeping across her brain, longing for the iron taste of blood, the delicate texture of raw meat. Slowly, she started to move. Nathan, really, just get out of the pond, please, Lonnie Day. You gotta come in first, just one foot, one toe even, just for say you did it and that all this time you were wrong about the pond. Otherwise, I'm going to stay in here forever. Nathan, don't say that, Lonnie said in a panic, stepping closer to the pond. It's bad luck. Well, just get out and let's go. Nope, he laughed, splashing water at her. Not until you come in. Lonnie hesitated. I'll look in, but I'm not stepping in, she said as she peered into the darkness below. The slimy creature heard the exchange of voices amplified through the water, the hum, the splash, all coming together to drive her on faster toward her goal. She opened her mouth in anticipation, jagged teeth gnashing through the stirred up muck from the human's movements, her razor sharp claws stretching out from wrinkled hands ready to grasp the tender flesh of her neck.
next meal. Lonnie saw a blink of yellow light at the bottom of the pond. It was moving, it seemed. Nathan, get out now, she screamed. What? Lonnie, what, what's going on? Nathan reacted as he reached up to grab the black rocks on the side. He pulled himself up, scrambling to hold on to something solid. The thing lunged at the human's body, trying to leave the pond, her massive hands grabbing a leg, sharp talons ripping through skin and muscle as the human heaved himself up the embankment onto dry land. Ow! What the? Lonnie, you scared me half to death. Now I would scrape my leg on the rocks, Nathan complained as he limped toward the pickup. He looked for his rubber slippers along the way. Grab my t-shirt and let's just go. Lonnie picked up the t-shirt and looked back at the dark water. The yellow eyes below the surface stared at her in anger and frustration. With a shiver, Lonnie turned to leave. As the she-creature watched the humans escape, her long, white, lizard-like tongue silently lapped at the sweet drops of Nathan's blood shining on the rocks. She knew there would be other opportunities like them, and she was very patient. The moon danced on the slight ripples as she slipped back to wait in the depths of her pond.